Hello again. In this video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to use embedded SQL within Profound.js. So this is going to serve as a basic introduction to embedded SQL. And we're going to start out with an example that we created earlier, which is this product inquiry, simple product inquiry application uh, that initially used record level access. So this is how the application works. And then the original code looks like this, where we're using a declaration of a record level for record level access and we're using record level access operations. So what if we wanted to use embedded SQL um, to do the same thing, to accomplish the same thing? So let's take a look at what the steps might be. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out the original lines of code here and we're going to use a prepared SQL statement to fetch the data instead. And when using the prepared SQL statement there are actually four steps that are required to go ahead and prepare the statement, find the parameters, execute the statement, and fetch the data. Now there's a shortcut API that I'll show you that combines all these four steps, but just to get a full picture of what it takes, let's go ahead and get started with the four steps. So the step number one, and let's just put a comment in here, is prepare the SQL statement. So that would look something like this. We're going to say um, bar C1, and C1 is, is what I'm calling my statement handle or cursor. I'm just giving it a short name, cursor1 or c1. And we're going to go ahead and do pjs prepare. So prepare is, creates, uh, is what creates a statement for us. And the SQL statement is the first parameter here. And that might look something like this. So we're going to grab the description field, the price field, the image field, and that's going to come from our products key file. Now we want to have a word clause here because this is a selection that's being made by the product ID. And here we're going to use a question mark, which, which is really a parameter marker. So whenever there's a dynamic piece of data, you would put in a question mark. And then as your next step, so this is step number two, you would go ahead and bind parameters to this SQL statement. So binding parameters might look something like this. We use pjs.bind parameters, an API that allows you to do that. And the first thing you need to specify is the statement handle or the SQL cursor. And then you would specify the list of parameters. If there are multiple parameters, you would be specifying them in an array. Uh, if there's only one parameter, you could just go ahead and specify it. So in this case, we're just using uh, PRID. So that binds the parameters. Step number three is to execute the statement. So let's go ahead and execute the statement. And that looks something like this. We're going to say pjs.execute and then specify which statement we're executing. Now the last step is to fetch the data. And um, if you were, um, you know, processing multiple records or multiple sets of records, you could be fetching data in a loop, you could be fetching multiple times, so you can fetch as much data as you needed. But here we're just fetching one single record. And uh, one alternative how you could do this is just to use the PJS fetch API. And you first specify the cursor, and then you would specify a list of fields that you're fetching the information into. And of course we have on our display, we already have these fields for the description, for the price and for the image. So this fetches the data. So this right here should give us the same results as what we had with record level access. We can go ahead and uh, save the application and let's just check it and see if it works the same way. I'm going to go ahead and run the application again. Select a record and you can see that the information has been retrieved just as well. So this is one way to use embedded SQL and now I want to go back and I want to show you some alternatives of how you can use it. So the first alternative way that you can use it is to fetch the data uh, but to fetch it not into your declared fields like we're doing right here. I want to show you that you can also fetch the data into standard JavaScript object or what we call primitive JavaScript object and that can be handy you know perhaps not necessarily in this scenario uh, but in, in so many scenarios that it's very handy to have this data in a true JavaScript object. 
So the, the way that you do this is you would simply say var record, and record becomes an object, a JavaScript object that receives the information. And then instead of specifying this information uh, or this list of fields that we're fetching the data into, we would omit this part. And that just means that we're going to return the data as primitive data, and it will create an object for us. So this syntax right here is basically giving us um, the, uh, the data into a record object, and then we can go ahead and uh, move the data into global fields. So it might look like something like this. So each one of these fields is going to be moved then um, accordingly from the record object into uh, the screen level fields. So just an alternative way to use um, embedded SQL is to fetch it into a primitive object first. So it might look something like this. So this should give you uh, the same exact results. Now, another thing that I want to note is uh, whenever we created this statement handle, so this is this object right here, this is actually an object. And if you're a fan of object-oriented uh, programming, uh, uh, then there's an alternate syntax because this object has properties and has methods. And whenever you're uh, using some of these API, like binding the parameters or executing the data or fetching the data, you can actually call it as a method on this object. So you may prefer to use this syntax so instead of using pgs.bind parameters, you would simply call bind parameters as a method on the cursor or on the statement handle. So this is alternative syntax that works. Uh, just the same. And so I can do that on all of these right here. So you may prefer the syntax if you're a fan of object-oriented programming. And the last variation that I want to show you is a simplification of all of this code with some shortcut commands. So uh, here we've taken uh, the four different steps to prepare the SQL, bind the parameters, execute the statement, and fetch the data but there's a shortcut command that does all four of these steps all at once. And there are times when it's useful to use the shortcut command. Other times you want to be more specific. Perhaps you want to assign certain attributes to, to the statement handle, and you want to take these steps separately. Uh, so a shortcut command would look something like this. So we have uh, something called PJS query that returns all of the data. as a primitive object. And we can basically eliminate all of this code and we can have something like this. So this, and let's just kind of clean everything up so that it looks very simple now. So this line of code uses PGS query, which returns, uh, which runs the statement. Now it has a few other parameters. So you can see that we've eliminated the bind parameters line. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, put the binding right into the query. So we can put in, an array of parameters to bind, and again, if you only have one parameter like we do here, we could just type it in like this. And there is a third parameter here, so normally PGS query returns an array of records because it's going to go out and fetch all the records. But you can also specify an additional parameter which, is, uh, which just tells PGS query how many records you really want. In this case, we're really just looking for one record. We're really just fetching a specific record. And if you are putting uh, a one here, meaning that you're just fetching one record. You don't get an array, but you get that specific record. So this is one way to simplify this right here. And then finally, let's simplify this in here as well. So the reason I, you may want to simplify this is because, you know, in my example, I only have three fields that are on the screen. But in a more realistic example, you may have 20 fields. 30 fields on the screen and you'll have all of these one-liners that move the information from the primitive object into the screen level data or the or the global uh, data. Well there's a shortcut command that does this for you automatically for all of the fields in the object and that is called PJS set field. So we have lots of different API that do kind of memory management and and allow you to work with with fields easily. So the set fields simply you pass to it an object like this record here, and it will go ahead 
and take every property within that object and move that into uh, a global field, whether that's declared explicitly with something like, uh, like a PGS define command, or if it comes uh, as part of a display, which is what we have here by just defining the display. So just by doing this, we can eliminate all of that code. So now we've simplified the way that we used SQL here. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to exit and just verify that this is running the same still. So let's go ahead and select the record. And as you can see, the application is still functioning the same. And our code has been somewhat simplified and we're using SQL. So I hope you enjoyed this video where I've demonstrated how to use SQL or embedded SQL within ProfoundJS. Mm -hmm.